right, everybody. Welcome back to our first podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us today, whether you're listening uh, through your podcast or if you're watching on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us today. We just wanted to come on. It's been a while and we have just been kind of crazy busy and, and just hadn't been able to do one yet uh, for a while. So uh, we are glad to come back to you and kind of give you some updates on some church calendar things and uh, just some cool stuff coming up. And then uh, just a lot of just a lot of good stuff happening. So we're excited to come give you a little uh, just church checkup, I guess, if there you yeah. will. And and so uh, thank you again for tuning in to us. And uh, first off, we've just had a, a in my opinion, uh, I know I'm a little biased because I'm the music guy, but I feel like we've had a great month of services and uh, between baptisms and just uh, some sweet spirit in the in the services. It's Amen. been it's been Amen. good the past couple months, past mm-hmm. month especially. And uh, and so uh, we hope as you are getting back in the swing of things, get back in school, that uh, we get to see you more. And uh, I know we've had a lot of people out for vacations and things of that nature, but uh, we're hoping that you, we get to see you more and get you plugged in in different areas. And so uh, this coming Sunday is a good Sunday. If you have never been a part of Sunday school, um, we are starting a brand new book. So you're not jumping in the middle of uh, a study already going on. Uh, this Sunday we are starting the book of Mark. And so uh, if you're in a lot of our classes, uh, Brother Clay has a class, I have a class, and uh, there's a lot of good classes going on. And so if you've never been a part of a Sunday school, please come try one out. Uh, Even if you just want to sit in a week and see what it's all about, uh, it's a great time of fellowship and camaraderie and coming together and uh, just the small group setting, and it's uh, it's always really good. But I'm excited about Mark. Uh, I don't know if you know this because it's probably been a long time since I shared it with you, but the verse that God affirmed me going into ministry is out of Mark, oh, wow. and so I'm I'm excited to get to that as well. And so it's got some. So I'm, that's part of why I'm really excited about it. I, lo- I love Mark. So plus, Mark was not a long winded guy like Luke. Luke mm. was all about the details. Mark was straight <laughs> to the point and let's get done and move on type of guy. So the chapter is a little shorter, and I, I like that. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, but it's going to be good. So nine fifteen Sunday mornings. Uh, we have a class for every age, and so we'd love to have you come be a part, and uh, it's going to be going to be a good day. So, yes, indeed. All right. I like Mark. Mark's one of my favorite. We also are studying Mark on Thursday mornings at our uh, men's prayer breakfast. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll we'll be all around Mark. That'd be good. It's a it's a good book. It's a good study, and it gives you know all the Matthew, Mark, and Luke are kind of similar in what they're talking about, but they all give different perspectives, and and so. Um, you kind of see the personality come out a little bit more. Matthew was the tax collector, and he focused on some uh, some details like that. Luke was the doctor, so he was all about every detail. You know, he was yeah, all about details. it. And Mark was just a here's the point type mm-hmm. of guy. So um, Always like he says immediately. Yeah. This happened yeah. then immediately. Yeah. So. He didn't waste time with they traveled here no. and 40 years later. You know, he, he, wasn't, he was just immediately. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so it's going to be really good. But we encourage you a lot to be a part of Sunday School Group. And um, it's just, it's very, it's very, it's a good way to have some personal connections. Um, and if you, if you're one that is struggling with not getting to know people that well, or don't feel like you've got your group or, um, you know, you need prayer for something and you don't feel like you have an avenue to do it. Sunday school is a great way to do that, to get involved. Uh, you are, uh, you have people all the time texting y'all's group, Hey, pray for this, pray for that. Y'all are, y'all are great about it. And, uh, and yeah, so it's a great way for that. In the world, you know, well, right. you know. <laughs> I'm biased. I'm biased. I'm biased. I'm biased. Yeah. yeah. So and uh, so we got an iffy teacher, but my class is good. <laughs> Don't talk bad about Craig like that. That's not nice. But uh, no, but they are they are great great Sunday schools, and so we oh, we pray that you'll come be a part of one. And uh, some also some good things going on uh, is revival is coming up, and it's going to be. Really I can't good. wait to see Brother Jim yeah. hear his story. So um, I've never met him before. Oh, so wow. I've, I've so the last time he was here. Just I don't know if you remember last last time he was here, uh, y'all had started a revival, and that same week is when you called me for the first time. Oh wow! And we had started talking, and you were getting into the revival as we started having those okay. initial conversations about right. me coming here, and so oh, I never got to him. meet him, but I watched him online as y'all were streaming. He's a fireball. You're gonna love him. Yeah. Um, just you know, really loves the Lord, uh, passionate about evangelism, discipleship. Um, and I mean, he's he's gonna bring it. I know yeah. that he he's um, even coming off cancer and and God healing him and 
uh, doing some things in his life. I, I, I can't wait to hear his story uh, yeah. of what all God's doing. Yeah. Uh, and he's but, kind of been a mentor to you oh, from yeah. what I've understood, yeah, kind yeah. of from a distance, but been a mentor yeah, to you. Yeah, what's awesome, you know, we, we met in Israel, um, had no clue who he was. He didn't know who, who I was. And um, so we were able to, to meet and speak and get around each other. And, yeah, he just pretty much took me under his wing. And yeah. he's loved on me. and. Uh, been a, been a good good friend, good yeah. pastor friend in my life, and yeah, I'm I'm good. excited to get to meet him and hear him and and uh, his worship leader Brian, yeah, Brian. is going to come mm-hmm. and uh, and lead the music for us, and mm-hmm. so um, and so that's going to be it's going just going to be a good week, and he'll uh, bring some old uh, guys with him, that, yeah, you know, cut up, and uh, I'll never forget the first time he came, brought Iris Blue and yeah. denim and. Uh, du- and you know, Dwayne. yes, that's his real name. Denim Blue is his real I name. I know. I know. It's wild. And just to hear Iris's story, I'm glad our ladies got to go over yeah. uh, to, to Texas and, and hear and uh, see Iris and all that kind of stuff. She has a powerful testimony. Yeah. So it's going to be good. Whatever yeah. happens, um, the Bible studies. Uh, last time he came, uh, we did a potluck. And yeah. uh, he said, "Let's do it again. I want I want to get yeah. around you people." He so, loves teaching. That's so. The let thing. me give you the schedule real quick. Just uh, here's the overarching schedule, and then we'll dig into it. But so September 10th is Sunday morning. He'll be here Sunday morning at 10:30. Sunday night at 6:30. That's a little different than we've done before, but uh, because of scheduling uh, around work and things like that, we decided to push it back 30 minutes. So every night service is at 6:30. Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night are all at 6:30. And that just helps people getting off of work and, and all that kind of stuff. We found that out through the Tuesday night services in July that we had a lot of people who were just getting off work and couldn't get here. So hopefully that will help just a little bit. Uh, but then during the day on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 11 o'clock is a potluck lunch Bible study with Brother Jim. So please bring your favorite dish uh, so that Brother Clay and I can eat it. Amen. And uh, I'm looking forward to that part of it. But, uh, but it is a potluck lunch, so please bring something uh, for that, whatever you know, whatever you want to bring for that, and uh, if you have questions on what we like, just call the office. We'll tell you exactly <laughs> what we like to eat. So, uh, but we're not picky about any means. I think but, it starts with uh, food. You yeah, know, we're we're it. really not picky at all. But uh, that starts at eleven o'clock. So we'll eat and have a Bible study with Brother Jim, and uh, that's going to be a good time. And then, of course, the services at six thirty on those nights. And there will be um, a love offering taken every night of the revival for Brother Jim and his team that are coming. So please be uh, ready for that as well. But it's just it's going to be a good week. I think it's going to be a refreshing week. We're coming out of the summer mm-hmm. and uh, and just getting back to our somewhat church routine, but also uh, just getting back focused on the Lord as we're hitting the ground running through all the, the stuff of life that we go through. And so uh, I think it's going to be really, really good. So. Getting ready I'm for all the, for the different things. Yeah. yeah, I was over here laughing when you you said uh, you know they're wrapping up their vacation and plans. Um, probably this weekend they'll, they'll be vacationing with it being the yeah. uh, holiday and everything. Yeah. But Labor hey, Day, yeah, yeah Labor don't, Day's don't, coming. Don't, don't don't check out on us. Come on to church. Be a part yeah. of what's going on. Don't make an excuse to hide away just because there's yeah. a holiday. And and you know, growing up with the because I grew up in the same pastor you did, mm-hmm. and he had this rule for the staff. Anytime my dad was on his staff, and anytime we were gone, he said, "You got to bring a bulletin to the church you visited if you it miss wasn't a Sunday." His staff, it was church. It members was church too. people too. Well, yeah. And so if if you go if you go on vacation, you got to at least go to a church somewhere, and you got to bring us a bulletin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, make sure. That's right. uh, but no, uh, but we want you here as much as you can. I'm telling you. Uh, if you have missed the past month of Sundays, you have missed a lot uh, between just the youth and the kids and their testimonies and getting saved and Presley preaching like crazy. I mean, that she went good. to town and she did uh-huh. good. And uh, it's just been some sweet, sweet services. So uh, we encourage you to be a part uh, of that. And don't miss Sundays. Don't don't miss Sunday mornings because uh, we have we have just seen the Lord move. And it's been really, really We've good. We've seen so, some healings. We've seen yeah. some. Prayed over know, some people. Prayed over and, some folks. Yeah, and uh, we had some we had a good report Sunday from mm-hmm. a couple as well so um, it's just been really good but uh, this coming Sunday Sunday night because of Labor Day weekend uh, we do not have any p.m. service activities p.m. activities on campus or mo- and Monday the offices are closed uh, that Monday September 4th I believe it is so Something like that um, and so just want to make you aware of that Labor Day uh, no services on the p.m. on Sunday and then offices are closed on that Monday 
Uh, and then we go after that and hit, get ready for revival. That All right, Sunday, so let's so. talk about the 17th because that's uh, yeah. the next Sunday after the revival and everything. When's what time's that going to start? So uh, I'm I'm I think I'm just as excited about this as I am the revival because I right. think it's going to be good. Uh, coming out of the revival, uh, Sunday morning will be normal on the mm-hmm. 17th, normal schedule Sunday morning. Uh, but then Sunday night, you are starting a new, well, it's not just you, but we are starting a new Sermon on the Mount series. Um, this is a, a, a preaching series that will be on Sunday night starting September 17th. And the last one will be November 5th, I believe. Somewhere in there. That, now, we'll take two weeks off because of getting ready for Trunk or Treat um, in the end of October. But uh, for the end, rest of September, most of October, and then the last Sunday, November, we will be having a uh, preaching series through the Sermon of the Mount. And uh, what's exciting is you're going you're gonna to kick it off and get it going. And then at some point, Brother Andrew's going to preach one. And then Brother Dale's going to preach one. Brother Josh is going to preach one. And yes, even me, I've got to preach wow. one. So, uh, yeah, they're in for something. I don't know <laughs> if it's good or not. But, uh, uh, but it's already you're going to get to title. hear title. I'm kind of nervous about it. I'm glad <laughs> I'm going to be out of town. I uh, know. Uh, we, we already have it split up who's preaching what. So, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, it's going to be a great sermon series. It's, it's diving in deep on uh, the one of the greatest sermons ever preached, if not the greatest that Jesus ever preached, Sermon on the Mount. So mm-hmm. um, we're going to be diving deep into that. It's going to be a great ser- sermon series. And uh, and so I'm looking forward to that as well. And that's going to be, again, every Sunday night uh, starting on September 17th. And those will be at 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, so don't I don't want you to get those times mixed up. That'll be at 5 p.m. on those Sunday nights. Uh, ministry team meetings will happen before or after. I think there's a deacons meeting one night, and there's team meetings around it. So uh, just be watching your emails for those uh, as well. But those Bible studies will be at 5 p.m., uh, 5 to 6, uh, especially as we're getting closer to time change again. Right. And so we wanted to make sure that as we approach that, we didn't uh, keep everybody out too late when you're driving during the night and driving when it's dark. And so... Uh, just want to make you aware of those, but it's going to be a, a great series as well. I'm, and I'm excited to hear uh, someone like Brother Dale who doesn't preach. Uh, he's mainly administrative, but he we're going to get to hear his heart on that. You'll get to hear Brother Josh preach uh, for the first time, I think, as far as church-wide like that, mm-hmm. and uh, get to hear his heart, and it's he's going to do a great job as well. So mm-hmm. uh, they kind of hear me preach every week, just not in a sermon <laughs> <laughs> uh, type deal, but... Uh, of course, they, you and Brother Andrew as well. But uh, it's just going to be—you're going to get to hear all the staff's heart in this, and just uh, a different perspective. And so it's going to be uh, very, very neat. So I, I hope you'll be there for that, and um, keep that on your calendar. So five o'clock, starting September seventeenth, those PM services, and uh, it's going to be really good. Yeah, so. I'm looking forward to it just to see you guys get get your opportunity because uh, what what our folks don't realize a lot of times. Um, especially Joshua and Andrew, you know, they're called to preach too, and they, yeah. they want to preach. There's times where they get to preach, and, um, you know, Joshua gets to do it on uh, Sunday mornings and uh, Wednesday nights and yeah. different stuff like that. But it's different when you're standing in the in the big house, so yeah. to speak. That's what I always called it in Philly when I got to <laughs> yeah. preach in the, in the, in the, behind the pulpit. <laughs> I get the big house. But, uh, you know, it's just different when you get to do that. And so um, I just encourage you guys to support them, come, listen um uh, you know just to hear uh, like you said what what a sermon what a what a great uh, text to preach and, and to it's, be a part it's of it's really good we so actually good. and just to give a little teaser um as you know most uh, we are looking at d life starting in january well as a staff we've been going through that and we just read through the sermon on the mount and man there's a lot of stuff in there so um uh, it's just it's just a good text. It's a it's a I mean probably the best sermon ever preached, mm-hmm. and by the Lord. So it's going to be really really good. I've actually had the opportunity in Israel to, yeah, to preach too. there and to preach. So. Well, I didn't get to preach there, but we've yeah. been to the 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 place where they say this is where he preached mm-hmm. it. You know, on, mm-hmm. on the mountain, and so and we got to go cool. to like a behind the scenes. Did y'all get to go out by the water where not many people get to go? On the Sea of Galilee? No. Oh, it's, where was that? All right, so you, you get to go uh, to to the mount where, yeah. you know, he set them all down. But, like, further back and in is actually the waters behind you. 
Yeah. And um, I don't remember if we did that or you not. You probably didn't. We we had we had a big um, group, so it's well we to do that. Um, being with Jim and and they've they've gone some you know multiple times. Yeah. They know who to see a lot of things. You if you pay a little extra, <laughs> you know who to you tip big. Yeah, yeah. Who to tip. Yeah. You can you can you get into big. those those behind the scene places. Yeah. And um, uh, I actually got to preach right there, and it was just it, it yeah yeah. It's something about being where he preached it. Oh, I mean, so and not special. just in that spot either, but just a lot of those places where you know this is where he was. It's just something special. But what was cool about the Mount of Beatitudes there, I think that's what they call it now, is Mount of Beatitudes. There's a church up there, mm -hmm. if I remember right, and everything. But the whole the whole place is set up acoustically. I mean, they didn't have no mic sound mm -hmm. system or anything, no. you know. But, I mean, they knew what they were doing. He got in such a place that acoustically he didn't have to shout. He didn't right. have to yell it. Well, the water just and, brings such a, yeah. you know, brings that that sound up and everything yeah. so yeah it's really cool. so it's just they they knew what they were doing it was cool so mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be good uh so when we get it we're doing this d life series uh not d life series i'm sorry sermon on the mount series uh that will go up to uh starting september 17th we'll go to october 22nd i believe um in that october 22nd we will not do it or the 29th right 22nd we we'll are doing blitz. a blitz for uh trunk or treat fall fest and then the 29th is the Fall Fest. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we'll take those two weeks off. And then November 5th is we do the last one. And uh, and then that'll wrap up the series. And then we're hitting Christmas and Thanksgiving service and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we'll have and wrap Bill up the year for so. our Thanksgiving yeah. community-wide. Do you remember with the date for that? Night. Seemed like it's uh, November the 17th, 17th just right yeah. off the top of my head. Somewhere Bill Britt's going to be here that morning to preach mm -hmm. for us, but then that night for the community-wide Thanksgiving service. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to do a great job. And bless – I mean, he's seen some stuff lately. Bless his yeah, heart. pray for yeah. him. He's had a blood clot yeah. in his leg. And he got he to preach for the first time since yeah. then. Mm -hmm. I think this past Sunday. This past Sunday, it, yeah. around Jonesboro, something yeah. like that. So, uh, <clears throat> thankfully, he's getting to preach again. Mm -hmm. And then just, uh, uh, just a shameless plug, be praying about uh, January. Uh, this D life stuff that you're going to start hearing a ton of it coming out. You're going to hear a lot of it. Uh, this is not, and I can't express this enough. This is not a program. Amen. This is not another book study. This is not. Now I, I loved experiencing God and I, I'm, I think it catapulted some people in our church and it just did a great job with that. But this is not another book study. This is not another uh, book to walk through uh, as a church. This is a new lifestyle to live. And uh, it's called Discipleship Life, D-Life. And um, you will hear, this This will become, if I know your heart, and I think I do, this is going to become the DNA of our church uh, going forward. This is It's, it's going to be a, a big deal. Uh, again, this is not something that we all need you to sign up on Planning Center to get. This no, is, people will ask you to be. This is going to be very intentional mm -hmm. discipleship. Um, and I'll just let me just put it this way: I'm a pastor's kid and my grandpastor's kid. <laughs> my grandfather retired as a pastor. My dad's a current pastor. I'm a third generation in this, and I don't know that I've ever been discipled like like this is going to be. Um, and so, uh, even as a minister, there's a lot of people that have never been discipled, and I'm a, I think that's one of the biggest failures of our modern day church. Not just this no, church, but just in general, the church the itself. Church, yeah. Has, that's one of the biggest, I think, failures that we've ever done is we're eager to get people saved, which we should, but then we don't do anything after that. And this will fix some of that. It will help a lot uh, mm -hmm. just with people growing in the Word. And, again, we've been doing it as a staff now for a couple of weeks, and just it's been incredible. There's, there's a couple of times that you'll say something like, I got the same thing, you know, and we, it's just good. And, um, but it's so, so simple. Uh, there's a man in our church uh, who is doing this now. He was at our boot camp, and he has started doing it with his grandson through FaceTime. And um, it's super simple. Even kids can do it. It's a, it's a great way to start having a family devotion time with your family. It's, it, there are so many great applications for it. And so please be praying about that in January. You'll be hearing a lot more about it. Uh, I don't want you to tune off of it just because you think it's another program or another book study. It's not. Uh, so please be praying about that uh, as we're coming closer to it. And again, you'll hear a lot more about it as we hit January. But I'm so excited for it. Again, we've been doing it, uh, just kind of working through it. And, and we love it so far. So 
Yeah, um, I would have liked to have started, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. You know, you're sitting chomping at the bit. No, because you know how powerful yeah. it is. Plus, you know that it's biblical. So yeah. anybody sitting out there that sits on the fence or, you know, well, I'm not sure that's for me or this or that. If, if you want to, you can go to your Bible right now, turn to Matthew 28, and uh, and, and read verses 18 and, and, and until the close, 18, 19, and 20, yeah. and, and then just kind of start to understand what a disciple is, how it was commanded. And then if you want to, you can start in the uh, very first part of Matthew or John or Luke <laughs> or you know any of those synoptic gospels right there. And look to see the life of Jesus, yeah. what he did, how he did it, and we're mirroring the same thing. Yeah. So it's not a program. It's not. It's the Bible. Yeah. And it's going to be intentionally where people will be in the same chapters, the same verses, the same. So the church as a whole, FBC Blanchard as a whole, yeah. could be potentially. Doesn't reading. have to be. But Doesn't have be. to. Yeah. It's, it's, hey, it's a choice. Yeah. All this is going to be a choice. Yeah. But you could be reading the same stuff right. at the same week, the same time, discussing it in a group and yeah. uh, growing closer to the Lord. Yeah. And let me just give a couple of quick points and, and then we'll close here. Because uh, if, we, if we're not careful, we could talk about oh, this for yeah. a long time. Oh, and I, again, we're, we're so passionate about it because already, we're already seeing it work. We're already seeing how good it can be and, uh, and will be. And so, uh, but just a couple of quick things. Uh, number one, if you are someone who is um, scared about teaching or praying out loud or talking out loud or whatever, uh, this is a great way to get comfortable with it. This is not something that you, you don't have to have a lesson prepared to teach. You don't have to come ready for this long. This is simply reading the scripture together and walking through some questions together and praying together and living life together, doing projects together. This is not something that you have to have a class ready class study ready to teach uh it's not that at all uh but then too if you are someone who uh doesn't pray out loud or isn't used to that this is a great way to learn how to do that um praying out loud has this uh stigma to it that it's you got to say the exact right things and all all praying is is that relationship with you and christ and and just talking to him having a, a conversation again we relate it to wives all the time if you don't talk to your wife <laughs> you're gonna be in trouble you're gonna have a bad relationship um and so it's the same with the lord you've got to talk back and forth and let him talk to you as well and so it's a great way to get you uh discipled in that manner of praying and and seeking the lord reading his word um and so i think i forget what the statistic is how what the percentage but it's very very high the percentage of people who call themselves Christians who don't read their Bible and don't eight pray. out of ten. Uh, yeah, I knew you'd know it. Yes, sir. Yeah. When I heard that stat, it blew me out it's of crazy. my chair. Eight out of ten people sitting in the pew do not daily read yeah. their Bible. Eight out of ten. Yeah. It's and, amazing. And so, what this uh, again? This is part of why I'm excited about this. Um, this is an easy way for you to do that. Again, this is so. Let me pull it down just, to, and then we'll move on. And then you're you're held accountable too yes. if you're in a group. You know, so somebody the, saying, "Hey, how was week yeah. one?" You know. So these groups, uh, again, I don't want you to be scared. These groups are not big. These are three to five people, and that's it. This is a very intimate group where you can just share life with one another and love on one another and read this together and have accountability together. Hey, let me just throw this in there. Yeah. It's handpicked by the leader. It's not yeah. us as a staff, yeah. but me as a pastor, anybody like that. Right. It's 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 going to be fluid, and um, where people just feel compelled to to ask people to be in their group, yeah. and some of them won't even be church members. Yeah. Some of them won't even be churched people. Yeah, they'll just be uh, folks yeah. that are in a group together. So I just wanted to push the, say right. that too that it's not us. It's to a determine small your group, group, small yeah. group setting, mm -hmm. doing life together, um, and so just doing life together and. Uh, but then the reading itself is really easy. This is one chapter a day. Yeah, it's one chapter a day. I mean, we've done two weeks now of it. First week was Matthew one through five, and that was it. You had five days, and you read one chapter a day for five days. Uh, second week we just got done with was six through ten. Again, it's one chapter a day for five days. Um, you can do that in a couple minutes, and you're done. And so, uh, this is an easy, 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 easy way 
to get you in that routine of reading your, reading the word and praying and seeking the Lord and all those kind of things. And um, and what we have been excited about is if we as a church are in that mode of seeking the Lord, reading His Word, and we're doing it corporately together uh, in the in Sunday morning, but then separately we go off during the week and we're doing the same thing, then we're going to see some stuff just blow up. We're going to see the Lord do some good, good stuff. Amen. And um, we're going to see people's lives change. This is not... Again, this is not just a study that or a fad that'll go away in six weeks or a month or whatever, but this is a lifestyle to live, and uh, it's what we're called to do. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's a command in, by by the Lord Himself, and so it's not just a uh, it's not just a call from your staff or the pastor to say let's get involved in this. This is a uh, it's a command from the Lord to say be discipled and disciple, and grow with one another. And so, hey, you know, it's um, cool we're just too. excited for it. You won't hear me say Henry Blackaby said. <laughs> It'll be Jesus said. Jesus said. That's yeah. it. And I mean, the only uh, the guy who did the workshop said it all, all the time. The only book we use is the Bible. It's the Bible. And there's a journal you can have that just mm-hmm. writes down everything. Yeah. And, but the Bible's it. And um, and so uh, again, experiencing God was a great tool. It, I feel like it, God is it was, corporately doing yeah. things together. I loved that, how. Uh, I mean, we got groups together that. Again, I said it many times. My group that it was people that I had, didn't have a relationship right. with at all, mm-hmm. and now we're we're good friends, and and so and almost uh, it helped with that to birth a Sunday school class. Yeah, we did too. So we did, and so, uh, but this is this is uh, another tool, but it's also just the Bible itself, and so this is it's just a it gives you a tool to use on how to read the Bible and just go off of that. So. Um, we encourage you to, again, pray about it. We're not saying you need to get involved right now or to be a leader of it or anything like that. We just want you to pray about being a part of a D-Life group and uh, see where the Lord would have you be, whether you want to be a leader or a, uh, a co-leader that's just under the leader learning how to how to lead a group, or if you just want to be a part of a group and just be a, a part of how it's, how it's going to go. And uh, there's no pressure on this to say you need to be a leader, and it's none of that. It's... Uh, what does the Lord want you to do and be a part of it? And uh, But we want you to be plugged in, and we want you to be involved. And so uh, this is a plea from the staff to be involved, but this is not just something to say uh, in six months it's going to be over. This is it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And whether you're, whether you're at this church for 30 years or you move to a different state, it still can be a lifestyle. Um, and part of the goal is even when our youth graduate high school and go off to college, they're still doing it. Uh, they're still continuing they're still to do it. Groups, so, yeah. And I'm telling you, if we get kids reading the Bible and youth reading the Bible and all, and they're growing up to be godly adults and our adults doing the same thing, it's, it's just going to be really, really good. Change. So, Life change. Well, we could talk about that for yeah, an hour. Yeah, we'll give them an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we could. We could talk about it for an hour. But uh, So it is, it's just exciting to see what all is happening. Mm-hmm. Um, we were talking about it in staff meeting yesterday about what all is happening in the kids' stuff. and oh, no. so and, exciting. Uh, just just some really cool things happen so, so, so let's tell them tell our listeners this so we're we're, we're dedicating a time every week now to our yep. podcast yep. we're going to be it's it's on the calendar uh certain time certain place the whole deal and uh so we'll get more fluid with this yep. too and well i'll just go ahead and tell you every my my goal at least we're recording this on every tuesday at 11 my goal is every wednesday morning it goes live so that's the plan as of right now right. is every Wednesday morning uh, we'll go uh, pub- well, we'll publish it. The next and plan, so. too, is that we'll send an email out with it, too, yeah. with some things that's going on, plus the link to yeah. this and, and get them going. So. Yes, sir. Information, we, information. It's, we, we try to overload you. Yes, sir. And, um, and so, but if you have any questions, we always say you feel free to call the office or look on your church app, church center. Please download that if you haven't yet. Do that, please. It's uh, easy to get involved on it. And uh, but it's called Church Center, and it'll it'll prompt you on things to do inside that to get plugged into our church, and uh, or you can check out the website at fbcblanchard.com, and uh, we have a YouTube page, FBC Blanchard, Louisiana. You can all our services is on there and everything, as well. So uh, there's information everywhere. So we don't we don't ever want to hear people say I didn't know because we try our best to give you information. So uh, but we love you, and uh, we'll see you. Tomorrow night, Wednesday night, hopefully, Bible study, Awana, choir practice. It's not too late to join. Another shameless plug. Come on. We, we'll let you come. Uh, come join the choir, band, media team, whatever you want to do. And uh, 
put it just kicking off everything. Awana had a great kickoff night. We had a good. So, we had like 28, 29 yeah. some Bible study. Bible study. So it's going to keep growing and grow. You may have to move the sanctuary at some point. We may. And, we uh, may. So, uh, but it's just going to be a, a good night. And so we'll hope to see you tomorrow night in the Lord's house and can't wait to see what all he's going to keep doing. Amen. So, love you. See you later.